Alright guys, welcome back to another tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you how to do is make a bed, um, a custom bed actually. So uh, there's a lot of code that goes into this, but it's really simple to set up. So I'll be explaining how to do that today. Um, this bed will basically set the spawn point for the player. It will test if it's a uh, night only and um, it will also have multiplayer support as well. So uh, as you can see, if we right click it right now, because it's day, it's not working. So it just outputs a message for that provided player. It's also multi-world support, so it should work on other worlds as well. Uh, if we break the head block, it destroys it. Break the feet block, it destroys it. Depending on the rotation that we're facing, it will be placing it on a different direction. So I have set that up for all different directions. And uh, the only other main thing that we need to do is go somewhere where there's no monsters. And uh, we're just going to set this time set night. And what we're going to do here is we're going to test to see if the spawn point can basically be set. So it's going to test for if there's blocks here uh, in the ground, if there's true then it's going to test to see if there's air above it for where the player is going to sit if that's also true then it's going to start a timer uh, to allow other people on multiplayer to get to the bed uh, before the um, it basically sets it to day and then it won't let them do it again so as you can see it took a little while now it's day so everyone should have had a chance to basically um, get to the bed right click on it and set their spawn point so, uh, and I'll uh, show you how it all works. So uh, the first thing that we're going to basically do is look at the item that's going to be placing it. Uh, you will need uh, two variables to, or global variables under the uh, global world uh, scope. So make sure to have a uh, true or false statement or logic a variable and a number variable for a, um, a world, a global world um, a scope, variable scope. You can name it whatever you want, but we're making we're gonna need one to make a timer and one to enable the timer. Uh, for resources, um, you're gonna need your custom models for your upper and um, lower part of your bed. I have a actual provided a kind of example of the directions and everything that you're going to need uh, for block bench so you can go and grab the files uh, later on if you want to and then your textures as well as your item texture as well so when you have all that uh, what you can do is you can create your um, your item and what you're going to need to do is put your item texture here then you're going to set all this up however you want uh, it's completely free on how you want to set it up that's fine um, I suggest using these settings though and then what you're going to do is basically set a uh, when right clicked on block event and with that event uh, we're doing a few things uh, a lot of it's just the same thing just direct uh, change the direction so we're detecting what direction the entity is facing so if the entity equals north then what we're we're testing for if there is not any blocks uh, or if there's not any air blocks below where the bed is going to be placed so at the coordinates and if there is air blocks at the location where the bed is going to be placed if that's true then it's going to replace the um, the feet block and the head block down here and it's going to um, set the direction to the uh, proper direction. Uh, so that's all the other things as well. So they're just different directions for where, um, based on what direction the entity is played, uh, the direction the entity is facing. So um, yeah, that's basically all there is for the right click event. Um, just make sure to use set all these to error that's going to be your feet and that's going to be your head block and that's all the same throughout this whole procedure. 
So then what you're going to need to do is create your feet block and what you want to do here is set your particle texture, your, um, your model for your feet, and then you're also going to want to set the direction to southwest, northeast on um, player side. Uh, set this to cutout and uh, you might want to adjust the the height of the bed too. Uh, I think beds are actually about a slab or just under a slab. I've set it to about a slab so for the height level it's a, a regular slab is 0 0.5 on the maximum Y coordinates so you can do that as well if you want to. And um, I've named it bed feet. The block is um, or the material type is uh, basically wood. It's going to be under the decorations tab. You can set this to be disabled. I just am using it for t testing purposes. Uh, the sound step is, or uh, step sound is wood, and for the hardness is 0 0.2 and 0 0.2. That's I believe what beds are naturally. So you might want to set that. Uh, for the custom drop, uh, what you want to do is drop the bed item and for when creative pick item, it's going to be the, um, the bed item as well. And uh, no specified tool is needed uh, for basically breaking it. You can break it with your hand, it's perfectly fine. And the harvest level should be set to zero. Uh, you should not have a affected by silk touch enabled either, so make sure that's disabled. And uh, your tick rate needs to be one. Uh, for the block color, I have it set to yellow, uh, just because, um, like the uh, block, uh, I have it set to yellow because of um, the bed's yellow. So why not? You might as well switch it up a little bit. So uh, the restriction to block being pushed, we want to block that. I'm not sure how Vanilla has it all set up, but with this system, it might um, be a little bit glitchy if it's not blocking piston movement. So you might want to enable that just because there's multiple blocks in its um, that would need to be pushed and I'm not sure how all that would work just yet. So um, just set this to block, all the other settings are fine, you don't need particles. Uh, for the inventory, uh, you don't need an inventory, we're using global variables, so that's fine. If we were using NBT uh, variables, you'd have to enable this and then set your uh, thing up accordingly, but um, because we're using global variables, it's fine. So there's a lot of um, things that go into uh, making this bed work. Uh, we'll start with the um, update tick because it's the least uh, troublesome. So what's happening here is we're testing if the global variable uh, timer is enabled. So that's basically the main part that's uh, constantly happening. So if it gets enabled, then what it's going to do is start the timer. So this is basically a timer to increase the increment by one uh, every tick. So if that's true, then it's going to test if the uh, variable is greater than 1000 uh, ticks. And that's roughly 50 seconds in game technically, but it's only about 25 for some reason right now. If that's true, then what it's going to do is it's going to set the time to zero, which is I think just a little bit before dawn or just at dawn, I'm not sure. And then it's going to disable the um, the timer, so the make sure it doesn't continue anymore. And what it's going to do is set the timer to zero again. So very basic mechanics, we're just basically doing that to make sure that the player on multiplayers have time to get to their beds and set their um, basically set uh, spawn points that's it so set their spawn points so that's basically the update timer it'll make a lot more sense when we actually get into the rest of the code so for the one block destroyed by explosion really simple stuff uh, we're testing if there is um, a bedhead 
uh, because this is the feet block that we're working on. We're testing if we're, there's a head block um, at the current coordinates above. And if true, the direction of it being north. And if that's also true, then it's removing the block with spawning particles. So it does that for every direction as well. And uh, for the for the block destroyed by player, it does the exact same thing as you can see here. So it's uh, destroyed by player. Now, where all the magic really happens is in this particular procedure uh, right here. Um, there's a lot going on, so I'll do my best to explain how it all works. A lot of it's uh, repetitive, but um, for the most part, all the only thing that you really need to set up is the air blocks. Everything else is taken care of. So we're testing for the direction of the, well, first thing we're doing is we're testing if it's not day in provided, uh, in the provided world. So that's important. If it's, if it's day, then it's going to output a message saying there's stuff to do, um, or there is stuff to do, uh, no time for a nap. So that's the error message. And that's just going to put it on the hot bar for the player. Um, Next, what it will do if it is night, then it will basically test to see if the direction is uh, facing north for the, the the block at being right clicked on. If it's uh, also, what it's going to do is test for um, three points. Now, all this uh, basically has to do with the spawn point direction where the spawn point is getting set. So. A lot of this is repetitive. So we're testing if there's not air below a given location next to the bed. If that's also true, then what we're going to, I think, no, we're, we're testing if there is not any air blocks below where the player is going to be standing. Um, then we're also going to test if there's air blocks where the player is going to be standing. So you have your um, ground block where, which you stand on that needs to be some sort of solid block that's not air. Uh, the one below where your feet are standing when you spawn it needs to be air and then the one where your head is is going to need to be air as well. So that's basically all the yellow parts in here. All those need to be set to air and there's um, a lot more to configure all in here as well but um, if that's true then what it's going to do is start the timer uh, this is where the timer comes in we're enabling the timer here then we're going to set the provided player spawn point to whatever coordinates that it needs to be and then we're going to uh, also output a message to the um, player on the action bar which is just going to say uh, your spawn point was set. And that does that for all different types of corners of the bed uh, based on the direction it's actually facing. So because you have uh, two blocks like this um, facing the, um, the actual bed, so say it's facing north, you have your head block and your, your foot block, we have to test for the right side and left side for both both of them so there's four of these on every direction as you can see here so there's a lot of code that you're gonna have to do um, I've left notes all in here just to explain what it needs to be this one says it needs to be air and so on so um, it's really easy to set up even if there isn't um, the air blocks and stuff aren't uh, added when I provide the actual example so um yeah there's a it, it, it's it looks a lot more complicated than it is but a lot of it's already configured just make sure to set up your global ver uh beforehand so you can basically inherit the um the uh proper variable types when you start to import your variables so with that being said uh, that's all that's happening here, so we can click next. There's no um, no particular uh, actual generation, so that's all good. And the only other thing is your head block, and it's basically the exact same settings as your foot block. It's um, 
also inheriting the item and one tick so all that's good and then you don't need mbt data now the only difference is one block broken by player what we're doing here instead is we're testing for the feet block so that's the only difference for the procedure wise uh, it still uses the timer it still uses the same um, right click event it's just um, the the actual destroyed by player and explosion are a little bit different uh, again no generation and all that's uh, set up so um, if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and I'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out